I think we've all discovered that um, one of the most important things we can do is to make a classroom that feels safe. Because if we're asking students from the very beginning to share their ideas, um, many students, especially those who are maybe a little more on the science phobic end, uh, are, are not used to sharing their ideas because they're afraid they're wrong. And you know, it's really important in this, in this pedagogy that students feel comfortable with sharing their ideas. And so we uh, go to great lengths right at the beginning of class to you know, establish norms in the class where everybody's ideas are okay and we want to hear everybody's ideas and we're not there to judge anybody's ideas. Um, we're there to, well, in a sense, we're there to evaluate ideas um, against each other and to come to a common understanding together. And the goal is first that they come to a common understanding in their small group, and then they share it with the whole class, and it may be that one group is the only one that has the right idea, and the rest of them are arguing against it. And the instructor is there to uh, let them present evidence to make the best case for, for which ideas are most consistent with the evidence. The role of the facilitator is very, very important here because we clearly know what the, the right idea is and we know where we want our students to get. And so it's our job to make sure they get there. Mm -hmm. And whether and, and that's not though by us telling them, it's by us asking questions and saying, okay, but you made that observation and how does that mesh with what you're saying now? And trying to draw those discrepancies out so that students are forced to say, oh, wow, I don't have evidence for my idea. This, this idea is clearly the more reasonable of the ideas. So this is why it's called guided inquiry, really, mm -hmm. is because we guide our students into a correct understanding by asking questions and, and pointing out evidence and, and um, getting them to, to really consider where their ideas are and how they mesh with the evidence that they've seen. I would say that my teaching philosophy is the one that now mesh with this method. So after learning about this method, I just changed my teaching philosophy, really. I just became a teaching philosophy. You know, I was interested in what students learn, but now it became more understanding how to best encourage their learning, create an atmosphere conducive to learning. So I do see myself as a coach, a motivator, whatever, facilitator, whatever you want to call it. But I think one of the most important roles is to make it exciting, is for people to be engaged and say, hey, you know, I want to learn this stuff. Part of the power of this pedagogy and method is to encourage students to really take ownership of these ideas because they're the ones constructing them. Um, and so they become their ideas. And mm -hmm. um, I think that we all do different versions of this, but um, at certain points during, during my classes, we have what I call consensus ideas discussions where we kind of take stock of what are, what are the big ideas that we've developed? Mm -hmm. And can somebody give me something that I can write on the board? And I'll write it on the board and, and I'll say, okay, can we all agree on this? And, um, and what's the evidence behind this? And so by the end of the class, they have all these consensus ideas that they have built through um, analysis of evidence and they have um, agreed upon as consensus ideas that really are theirs. And um, you know, once you get them to take ownership of their, these ideas and actually um, have the ability to back them up with evidence, I think that it builds a lot of confidence in these ideas um, and it helps them be able to remember them and apply them as well.